Hi, this is Laura Brandenburg for Bridging the Gap. And today's question is about staying focused on work. In particular, when it comes time for like that heads down thinking type of work and you're working from home, which may be still a relatively new thing. And it's easy, especially when you're at home to, to make an excuse to kind of put that work off you know, especially when the kids or the household tasks are calling. So first of all, just to frame how this work fits into the business analyst role. As a business analyst, you could expect to expend anywhere from a half to two thirds of your time in what would be considered heads down work. And this is time that you might be creating draft of your, drafts of your models or thinking through problems or preparing for meetings that are coming up the next day or the next week or reviewing documentation to get ready for analyzing some requirements or updating the documentation you created based on your meeting. So all work where you're mostly working independently at your computer or quote unquote heads down. Now, you, you also have then about a third to a half of your time, depending on the role and your own nature, where you would be more in collaborative work. And that's where you'd be asking questions, reviewing models with your stakeholders, getting input from stakeholders, getting feedback. Um, so that collaborative requirements, elicitation and validation type of work with at least one, often several other people. Uh, and then in addition to that, there would also be project status meetings and administrative type meetings with your team or with your manager. And you might attend meetings where you're contributing to others' work, such as like a technical design meeting or a test plan review. Okay, so that's just a little view, review of kind of how this fits into a typical business analyst role. And by the way, if you do want to learn more about the business analyst role and what the business analysis process looks like on a typical technology project, be sure to check out our free workshop. Uh, it's called the Quick Start to Success Workshop, and you can get that at bridgingthegap.com. There are hyphens in that Bridging the Gap. So bridgingthegap.com slash quick, and there should be a link below this video as well. But back to this challenge at hand. So this particular person is having no problem like focusing during meetings because they feel like it's work, um, but they are having some trouble focusing with the more heads down type of work. And I think it's important just like how we define work here. And yes, it's heads down work. And because of that, we might not feel our value so concretely even though it's incredibly important. This is where we do our analytical thinking. This is where we prepare. So all that time in our meetings is actually a true value add. It's really effective and efficient and a great use of everyone's time. Um, but you know, it's, it's interesting because it doesn't have often that tangible feeling. Um, we might work on a model, right? But we're not really done. We still have questions to run by a stakeholder. Um, and so we can start to feel kind of question our, the value of of that time. And it might be for those of you who are used to working in an office that when you're in an office, it's easier to define it as work because you're sitting in a desk that's, you know, in an office building, right? But when you're at home and you're sitting in front of the computer, where are you at? Are you at your desk? Are you in your home office? Are you making something do at the kitchen table, right? And so how about if you know we happen to have a great idea about a project while we're cooking dinner or in the shower? What actually defines work time uh, and, and work? And I think just this is a time, one of the things we can take from this time that we're in together is revisiting some of these things that we probably had underlying assumptions about, but now our routines have changed. And so we get to kind of reevaluate everything. So that would be my first question for you is just thinking about what work means. Now, on to some more concrete suggestions. So my first suggestion is really when you do sit down to do this kind of work, is get really clear on what you need to accomplish and the value of each activity. So be clear for yourself how this heads down work, how it moves your project forward, because this is gonna help you motivate, um, be motivated and focused on it, quite honestly. And my next concrete suggestion is just to be really, really gentle with yourself right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic after all, and there's a lot of uncertainty and challenge in the world. Um, and these are not normal times. So 
for me, I have young children at home and I'm sharing household and childcare responsibilities with my husband and my work day because of all that has been basically cut in half. Yet there are days when I sit down for those fr precious few work hours and I find myself like distracted with unessential tasks and I end that time feeling like I got nothing done. Um, and part of what's happening, I think, in that time is that it's when it's like when we sit down and are still and quiet and giving ourselves this gift of focused time, it's when all the concerns and the emotions about what's happening in the world start to bubble up for us. And it can be like that distraction, that need to distract ourselves with household work or on social media or turning on the news or whatever it is for you. It can actually be a distraction mechanism to keeping you from having to deal with those emotions and concerns. I know that's part of what's been happening for me. And I have some pretty good boundaries, but it's still been happening. Uh, and I think it can happen to all of us. So if this resonates with you, my suggestion is to find time in your day that's not your focus work time to be quiet and notice what comes up for you. And it might feel a little uncomfortable, but it's in that discomfort that the growth happens. So you might consider meditating or journaling as ways to identify and kind of release these thoughts. Um, and this is also work that we do together as part of my Circle of Success coaching program as well. So next, um, a final concrete suggestion I have for you, and this was suggested by one of my instructors, Disha Trevetti, um, is to time box. And in that time commitment, make sure you are just staying focused on one activity. So you do wanna spend some time planning out your day or your week, and then when you are sitting down for that hour, or that 50 minutes, right, um, just commit to staying focused and as stray thoughts come up, especially if they're tasks that you need to do instead of like doing them right now, like, oh, I need to walk the dog or, oh, I need to do my laundry. Just write it down on a piece of paper and then make sure you have time set aside to go through those action items that you identify for yourself and put them, you know, put them into a plan as well. So those are some of the concrete suggestions that you have, and I hope that you find them helpful. But before I close out this particular video, um, I want to just kind of zoom out over the situation and look at things from a bit of a higher level, yeah, the 30,000 feet level. We were probably at like the 10,000 foot level, right? Let's take it up a level. And the idea I, in the, the, the level I want to talk about is, again, this mindset of work because it can actually be kind of quite complex. And not just because, um, well, actually, yes, exactly because of what has happened while we have been sheltered in place is that all of our normal routines get thrown out the window. And quite honestly, some of those routines were serving us in ways that we didn't fully appreciate. And some of those routines were not serving us in ways that we were not realizing that they weren't serving us. So this time that we're in together is a time of immense potential for personal growth. And not just like, the kind of growth that a lot of you are doing, which is like creating time for online training and certifications and kind of all of these extra things to fill in the empty space. Um, that's amazing and that's awesome. And if you are looking for things to fill in that space, we can help you with that with our online training programs for business analysts. But I know a lot of you like don't have this extra time, right? And are just trying to find enough time to get your key work done while making sure your family stay mentally, emotionally, and physically healthy. I, I'm there with you. Um, because, but it doesn't, the, the piece I want to call out for you is that the learning doesn't have to happen just by doing more. Simply leaning into this situation and learning from the situation is going to tell us a lot about ourselves. And once we have that awareness, we can decide how we want to respond. Because our normal routines, again, they've been disrupted. And we get to see what our true defaults are when we don't have those routines and structures to kind of keep us in like a, a habitual pattern. And we are also exposed to new things that might trigger us or new circumstances that might trigger us. So it's a great time to ask ourselves some big questions. So I have some questions for you if you want to do some journaling. Uh, what do I actually need to feel taken care of? What work do I enjoy the most? 
and why? What value am I creating here? How did being in the office serve me? How does being at home serve me? What does my sense of personal and professional success look like? And we're going to start to pull out of this time to a certain degree and to pull the pull to return to our old normal could be incredibly strong. So now is the time to ask ourselves these questions, to learn from the experience that you've had, to emerge stronger and more self-aware. And I would love to hear from you as well if you want to share your reflections to those questions or just a comment that you can share with your fellow colleagues here in the profession. Like, what are you doing to stay focused this, during this time? How are you handling it when, you know, the household chores are coming up or the distractions are coming up or those thoughts are coming up? How are you staying focused? You never know how your comment can inspire someone else or help someone else or just give somebody that aha they need to get to the next level in their careers as well. So thank you again for, as always, for doing what you do as a business analyst. We build our profession one business analyst at a time. Success starts with you. I absolutely can't wait to hear from you what you take away from this video and what you're doing to stay focused. And don't forget, if you do want to learn more about the business analysis process and also the business analyst success path, be sure to click out, check out our, our free workshop quick start to success as a business analyst at bridgingthegap.com bridging slash quick. Talk to you soon.